Welcome to another OpenTunes tutorial. In this video, we're going to be learning how to apply effects to our animation and also how to use the Node Graph Editor. So I'm in the Animation tab. Um, there's these different rooms like we've talked about before, they're all customizable. And in this one, we're going to want to kind of come to the Animation tab and then resize some of this. So I'm going to make my actual animation much, much, much smaller because I really want to see, I can just scroll out with my scroll wheel and still see the whole thing, but I want to see a lot of my function editor, and I want to be able to see this stage schematic as well, so we're going to make it pretty big. And you may remember from other, other past lessons, if we double click like on the stage schematic, we can see it in just full screen, and double click again, oops, to make it go down. Same with like the function editor, or anything really, we can just see, you know, double click and make, see something in just, uh, just by itself. Anyway, I'm going to open up the stage schematic here and just so we can take a look at what's going on here. We've looked in the past, we have our, our table, which is basically our entire project. Then we have all these different columns. Maybe I'll come back here so we can just kind of, in case you're, you're hazy on it. These columns are mapped to the columns up here in our X sheet. So column one corresponds with this. And when we select it, if it's yellow here, it's also going to be yellow here. It's also going to be what's selected here on this drop down. So if we wanted to move the position of like uh, the sun, we can click the sun down here in the stage schematic and then just move it over here. It's just like selecting the column here. Before I forget, I'm gonna just come down here and uh, extend some of these down to maybe about 30 frames just so we have a little sort of animation happening. Um, but so to apply effects, you'll notice down here, it tells us everything that's going on. We have our stage and we have all these different columns, we have our camera, but we also have this folder called effects and it's empty. If we click on it, nothing happens because we don't have any effects applied yet. To apply effects, we need to change the schematic we're looking at from the stage schematic to the effects schematic. To do that, you go to the very bottom right-hand corner and we click here and it toggles it. So now we're in the effects schematic. Very important to understand the difference between the two. This is the one we've used in the past to create like our skeleton structure. We can link certain columns to other columns. Um, we can do like a pegboard and we can tie this, a certain column to a pegboard. So when we move this pegboard, like this peg one now, if we move it, just the clouds will move and nothing else. But um, over here in the effects, it's different. So when the effects, when we right click, we don't get the option for pegboard, we get the option to add an effect. We can also add effects by just clicking effects down here and it brings up some different effects we can look through. So we can do a lot of different things here. Kind of a simple one. Well, first of all, let's see. Let's just see what the structure looks like. So we have our uh, X sheet here and then we have our output. So output is gonna be everything. If we wanted to like apply a blur to everything, we can just right click on X sheet and go insert effects and go to blur and we'll just insert a blur. And now that puts a blur right here between, uh, so our entire animation will be blurred. So if we wanna see that, we have to click up here under preview and it'll show us what it'll look like. So the, we just don't see, the effects being applied, we just don't see it under preview because it takes a little, takes some processing power to apply certain effects. So now that whole thing is blurred. To get rid of this, we can just hit the delete key and now it's gone. Suppose we just want to make the mountains blurry. We can come over here and kind of, it doesn't matter where they show up here in this node graph, but we can take these mountains, right click on them and go insert effects, go to blur, and now we can blur just the mountains. So now we see, if we look at our scene, the mountains are blurred, but the clouds are still sharp and the sun is still sharp. And that's because we have the blur here. We can make changes to the blur, so we can double click and we can change um, the, the value here of how blurry it is. Let's actually show you how to time, uh, how to keyframe the blur. So this blur actually appears now that it's applied. It appears down here in our effects folder, and we can change this value if we click on it. It shows up over here in our function editor. And to do this, we just right click and go set key. So we can set a key for how blurry we want it to be. Maybe over the first ten frames, we want it to come into focus. So we come down to, to frame ten in our function editor, not in our X sheet and then we set a keyframe at one and a keyframe at 10. Then all we have to do is maybe make the value here zero at one and hit enter. Oh, that's the other way around. Control Z to undo that. Let's make it zero here. So it'll start out blurry and then it'll come into focus. 
And again, this preview takes a little bit of time to generate, so we'll see what that looks like. So we see it just comes into focus and it's just the mountains. You probably wouldn't want to do that particular one, but it's a good way to learn kind of how these work. And so this, we could apply this to anything we want. If we want the blur to be on the sun instead, we can keep this node and we'll just come in here and select this connection and hit the delete key and delete that connection and select this connection and delete it. And now we can actually bring the sun and delete the sun connection and then bring the blur and have it be the sun goes into the blur node, the blur node blurs the sun, and then we send that to our X sheet. And now the sun should be a little bit blurred, and then we'll put this back in here. So did it work? Oh, but it's only gonna be blurred at uh, frame one. If we go to frame one of our animation, we'll see that sun be blurry. And then by frame 10, oops, I turned on onion skin instead. By frame 10, it'll be sharp again. That's kind of cool, right? Uh, all right, enough of blur. Let's do something else. Let's. Uh, we can also create. So if we go to Add Effects, right-click Add Effects, we can go to the shaders. We can create like a fireball here, and so this could be like our sun. If we come over here, it has different settings. We can change the color of it, and we can change the evolution of it, which is like how it's flaming. So we'll just keep it right here in the middle for now. But we can actually change the way that this. Uh, well, we can. We can Maybe we'll make it the actual sun, how about that might work. So we just go to scale, we'll just scale this down a little bit larger, and then we go to position, and we'll just move it right over top of where the sun is. And then you see the sun's in front, that's just because that column's in front, we can just flop those around and now we kind of see that. So now we can have this like evolve a little bit. So our sun, you see, the the actual sun um, node is not tying into there, it's just over top of it. So we've actually generated this fireball effect. It's not being applied to any certain image. And then let's go to the settings here under evolution and we can change the evolution on it. We come to evolution in the function editor, right click and go to set key. And maybe we want it to evolve the whole 30 frames. So we go set key here and we just have it start at like one and then we'll have it end at something and you gotta, ooh, whoops, you kinda gotta play with these numbers, we'll have it end at like 8 and see how that looks so this will render through and we'll just loop through real quick to get it to render each one and you see it just takes time but that's kind of a cool effect, right? It looks like the sun's on fire and once it loop, once it plays through once then it'll have it, all the renderings done and it'll do it very quickly so that's pretty cool. And then again, this is this is one of those times we want to make this linear instead of speed in, speed out. We want to make it linear so it loops and looks very nice. And then we can have the sun just doing that sort of thing there. I'd have to re... Uh, oh, I have to apply it to make it do that. And then it'll slowly go through and render those. Um, also, one thing you might want to do is like a background. So you can go add effects. We can add a background. We can do this color card. And that just adds in a color. So let me pause this. So right now this color is going to be here and we can set it to our background and we'll just turn off our background now and then we can have our color be a, a, an actual background. So let's take it, double click, and we can change the color of this background to like a nice sky blue color. So this color card actually has a keyframe icon on it. We can just change the color we want and click set key and that'll set the key on all of the different colors. So we come back up to, to frame one and we want to change it to be something else. So by frame one, we just double click the color we want it to be and hit set key. And now it'll sort of go through to each of those. So we see our sky kind of lightens up in color and our sun is still there flaming away. All right, there's a lot of different effects, but you can hopefully you can see how that uh, can be pretty cool and pretty useful for doing all kinds of different, uh, adding different effects to your animations. And so just be aware and um, probably just go in and play with those to get familiar with them, bring up the effects. There's a lot of different ones you can do. You can adjust, do adjusting the image, you can do gradients, um, you can do motion blur, which is pretty nice if you have like a moving object. Um, a lot of different things you can render. We've got clouds, you can do some water and different things like that. Bubbles, let's try this bubbles and just see what it looks like. And again, a lot of these, I haven't even used most of these, so a lot of these is just getting in and playing with them and seeing how they look. For some reason, this is getting covered up. 
So this bubbles looks like it puts some little kind of bubbles here. But this video is getting a little bit long and hopefully you've seen how to sort of play with these. Just remember toggling between the stage schematic and the effect schematic just because they're nodes um, doesn't mean that they're the same thing. They're, they're two different tools. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any. Um, appreciate you watching and uh, I think I'm getting to the end of what I can teach you in OpenTunes. I'm going to include some links for some really good resources of other uh, content creators out there that show you their workflow. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can apply these skills and so I'm probably not the best person to be teaching you how to apply these skills given that I don't really do this on a day-to-day -day basis. But I appreciate you watching and sticking with me with this tutorial series. And uh, as new uh, things come up, new different projects that I can create in OpenTunes, I'll be sure to make some videos and include them to this playlist. So thanks for watching, and catch you in the next video.